<laughs> so uh, this is the second time you've done comedy live? Yeah. All right. Well, here we go. Yes. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here tonight. I want to talk to you about uh, some challenges that you and I have faced growing up and some um, discoveries that I've made along the way. And then also, because I've written a couple of uh, books of light verse, I'll share a few poems with you. And I've noticed that in today's society, everyone is in a hurry. Rush, 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 go, go, go. So I've become a singer of extremely short songs. <laughs> Actually, my presentation can best be described by a quote from the late George Burns, who said, in the beginning, there was nothing. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. There was still nothing, but you could see it a whole lot better. <laughs> now, the first challenge I want to talk with you about is one we've all faced. And I don't care whether you're a bus driver or a brain surgeon. If you didn't succeed in this, you wouldn't be where you are today. I'm talking about potty training. <laughs> Just imagine what the world would be like if we didn't succeed in No, don't imagine it. It's too grim. <laughs> I remember my first success. My parents hugged me and kissed me, told me what a wonderful little boy I was. And I thought to myself, boy, if just taking a little dump in that pot makes them so happy, I'm going to have a wonderful childhood. <laughs> and I did. And here's, a little, here's a little poem I think you might appreciate. It's called Foolish Frank's Pain. And Foolish Frank is a character in both of my books, but this is about his pain. And it goes like this. He pressed his finger to his cheek and felt a lot of pain. He pressed his finger to his neck and felt the pain again. There must be something very wrong, is what poor Frankie thought. He pressed his finger to his chest and again the pain was brought. He went straight off to the doctor, for he was not one to linger, and sure enough the doctor said, you've got a broken finger. <laughs> Because God made thee mine, I'll cherish thee. Oh, if we just slow down. Now, the next challenge I want to talk with you about is not as significant as the first, but I bring it up because I'm concerned about today's kids, today's youth. I'm talking about tying your shoes. Remember when you first tried to tie your shoes? Yeah. You made a knot. You made another knot. And you kept making knots, but finally, finally you made a bow. And then you made another bow, and then pretty soon you could tie your shoes. And you were proud. I could tie my shoes all by myself. But today's kids, all they wear is flip-flops. When are they going to learn how to tie their shoes? <laughs> you know, they could, they could grow up, they could go to college, they could become successful in business, they become doctors and lawyers, or they could get hooked on drugs and they can become homeless and end up on skid row. All that is possible. But first, they should tie their shoes. <laughs> now the next challenge I face was one I really enjoyed. Riding a two-wheel bicycle without training wheels. Yeah, I'm sure you remember your first bicycle. Mine was a black and white Schwinn. And I remember pedaling and pedaling, and my father would run alongside behind me, holding onto the, the fender, helping me keep my balance. And then he'd let go, and I'd be on my own. And I, I, it was so exciting and thrilling. And there'd be a lot of crashes and smashes, like a demolition derby, but I loved it. And bicycle riding became my absolute favorite activity. I was about 10. Right. Then when I got to be a little older, about 12, I made a discovery. Girls were different than boys. And I thought I should have a girlfriend. So I got one. Her name was Mary Ann, and she had pretty, pretty blue eyes, red hair, and she was lots of fun. We did. She was kind of a tomboy. We we did a lot of things together. We went skating. We went to the park. We went fishing. We went bike riding. We climbed trees. She was great. I really liked her, but not quite as much as my bicycle, but she, but she was pretty. Good. <laughs> and I learned something from her. I learned that girls are more concerned with how they look than boys are. She'd often ask me how she looked. And one day, we were going to a birthday party, and she came out of the house wearing a beautiful pink little party dress, 
and she looked at me and she said, Richard, does this dress make me look fat? <laughs> and I was only 12, but I recognized that that question was loaded with danger. <laughs> I mean, a wrong answer could end our friendship. It could even be life-threatening. So I just said, oh, you look terrific. We went to the party, everything was okay. The next challenge is one that, probably the, the worst challenge, the most frightening challenge I ever had, and that was, the, I was about 15, and it was the French kiss. And I just knew that someone was gonna bite my tongue, <laughs> and I'd end up bleeding, and I had to go get a, a shot from the doctor. It scared the heck out of me. But you know, it was something you just had to do. So I have, I'm happy to report that I made it through, and I didn't get my tongue yet. <laughs> but about a year later, I was about 15 then, about a year or two later, I made the most awesome discovery. Unbelievable. Sex. Orgasms. Wow. I, I have to tell you, bicycle riding was no longer my favorite activity. <laughs> and about a year after that, I found out it was even better when you had a partner. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the Korean War came along, and I went in the service, and that was a challenge. And I got out of the service, went to college, that was a challenge. And I became a teacher, and that's a challenge every single day. And then I got married, and that's a lifelong challenge. <laughs> but you know, uh, every poet, I think, uh, has to uh, write a poem about love. And I wrote one that got, got me in trouble with my wife. And it was called My Love, and it goes like this. She makes the night seem like the day. She knows exactly what to say to help me out when I'm in doubt. She never shows a frown or pout. She is the sunshine of my life. She is my next door neighbor's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, my wife had a sense of humor. She didn't get divorced. But, but a, little, a little while later, I really got in trouble. We were going to a dinner party, and we were late. And my wife was getting dressed, and I was getting nervous because I hate to be late. And she was wait, I'm waiting and waiting. Finally, she finally came out of the dressing room, and she said, Richard, does this dress make me look fat? <laughs> and I was so tense, I said, it's not the dress. <laughs> I, I spent many nights on the couch with her. <laughs> Here, here's one more little poem for you. It's called Celebrate, and it goes like this. Start a parade and strike up the band. Let it be known throughout the land. Tell every person near and far, I got the lid off the pickle jar. <laughs> you know, I told you I was a teacher, and I'm going to tell you about one more one more discovery I made. I was teaching school in small school in Granada Hills, and I was at recess duty, and that's when the teacher goes out and makes sure that the kids are supposed to be playing and not killing each other. <laughs> and, and, and my partner that day was Mrs. William, Williams, and I was about 24 at the time. She was about 65. Mm -hmm. And I was walking around the playground, I noticed that someone had taken white chalk and on the gray asphalt playground had written F U C T. <laughs> and I called Mrs. Williams over. I said, Come here, Mrs. Williams. Look at that. They can't even spell. <laughs> and this little old lady said to me, Richard, what's the matter with you? Don't you recognize past tense? <laughs> But one more discovery. I was sent out to, uh, to the east side teaching at a school, of a, a Mexican school, all Spanish speaking. And in my first class, uh, I was teaching physical education. My first class was a kindergarten class. So they only spoke Spanish, and I don't speak Spanish. But I had a Spanish speaking aide. So we went out to the yard, and I got all the kids there, but my Spanish speaking aide was absent. So I got them all in a big circle, and I had a, I had a big playground ball. I said, I said, okay, when the ball comes, get the ball. And I rolled the ball. 
and they did this. <laughs> so I discovered that any time I had to speech, uh, teach a Spanish-speaking kindergarten class, and my, if my aide was absent, I was definitely going to be F, <laughs> C, T. Good night, everyone. Thanks for coming. Get your minds, everyone.